Hey friends, Deanna here with Homestead and Chill and I'm here today to talk to you about something that I'm really excited about and I think you guys are going to love as well. And that is actively aerated compost tea or also known as AAC tea. Um, aerated compost tea is something that we love to give to our garden in addition to using worm castings um, just straight in the beds. We actually aerate and make a tea out of the worm castings um, and it vastly increases the already um, you know beneficial properties of worm castings and and gives our garden a great you know nutritious natural um, feeding of sorts and I swear it's what contributes to a lot of the uh, vitality and success in our garden and so you don't have to use worm castings to make aerated compost tea um, that is what we use you can also use other forms of homemade compost and even if you don't have your own worm bin you can buy there's usually like bags available at local nursery centers and things of um, worm castings that you can already make even though the stuff you make at home um, is going to be probably the strongest and most fresh and microbially active. So um, I'm going to show you what we do today on how to make actively aerated compost tea. And if you don't have a worm bin set up already, remember we already did do a couple of posts leading up to this one. Um, so this is kind of the third part in the series of the vermicomposting um, that I've been sharing on the blog and on YouTube. So we already went over how to make a basic um, worm compost bin, like a simple tote style bin. So check that out if you haven't seen that already. already. And then we also just showed um, how to harvest castings to get them to this nice, fine, screened, um, finished product once you're ready to harvest from your worm bin. So check those out and that's kind of leading up to now what to do with worm castings. So you can add worm castings straight to your garden beds, that's great as well. But as I mentioned, when you add, um, when you actively aerate the worm castings with bubblers and things, and I'll talk more about these supplies in a moment, um, it vastly increases the microbial activity and the nutrients that are already in here. So it's basically like taking your kick-ass worm castings and supercharging them and making a aerated alive fertilizer for your plants. Um, worm castings are really great at enhancing nutrient uptake in plants, increasing their um, resistance to disease and drought and pests, basically like an immune system booster for plants. And it also helps with the soil properties. So it increases soil um, moisture retention and drainage generation as well. So um, we, we love worm castings and then making worm tea is just one step further. So to go over some of the supplies that we have here today, um, we obviously have our worm castings. Like I said, you can use other supplies though, or I mean other um, forms of compost and I will show a close-up of all of this as well and then to actually make like tea bags that we're gonna steep in these buckets we have a few different things um, you could use cheesecloth that works as well we found that it's harder to reuse over and over though because it gets kind of funky and breaks apart sometimes um, this is like a big tea sack that we made out of a burlap bag and then I just sewed it up and made a bag so we have that and then these are like um, paint strainers that you can get um, you know at any hardware store for keeping chunks out of paint and they make really good little tea bags as well. Um, and so we have bags that we're gonna put our worm castings in. Obviously we've got some buckets over here and this is rainwater. If you don't have access to capturing rainwater, that's fine. Just try to use dechlorinated water if possible. Um, and so we have um, rainwater capture, but if you use like tap water that has chlorine in it, just put your buckets out in the in the sun for a day or two before you're gonna make your compost tea. And usually a lot of the chlorine will dissipate and burn off. Um, it, it, unless your municipal system uses chloramines, those don't burn off quite the same. Um, there's also some little like hose filters you can use. We have a few of them and they're really inexpensive. They're made for RVs. And so it's like a carbon filter for your hose. So you can get those as well to get dechlorinated water because to make active tea, like I said, we're trying to increase microbial activity and um, chlorine can inhibit that. So you want to try to use dechlorinated water. So we're going to make three buckets here and then how we actually aerate it. Um, before I talk about aeration too, I do want to mention, because it's something that people confuse quite often, is that aerated compost tea is different than what people call worm tea that's like that liquid that comes from the bottom of a, an overly wet worm bin, that's actually leachate um, and it's not microbially active and it's actually anaerobic and can have negative pathogens in it. Um, so that's not the same as um, this kind of worm tea. So when worm bins leak, you could try to aerate that stuff, but generally what we try to do is just keep our worm bin from getting that wet in the first place. We don't even have drainage holes in the bottom of our worm bin, um, as I described in that post about how to set one up. Um, and so it's different stuff. So this is, this is microbially active, it's aerobic, and it's a very, very rich, nutritious product um, compared to that, that leachate stuff. Um, so to actually introduce the air, we have a few different tools here. We used to have, and you can get a little like small aquarium size pump um, for like a, like a fish aquarium. And those work okay, but they usually don't put out quite as much air. And because we want to bubble 
multiple buckets at a time. We're going to make almost 15 gallons here. Um, we upgraded to this larger um, air pump and I'm going to, I'll link to in this video. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put a link to all of our compost supplies in the caption below. And then if you're tuning in on the blog post, I'll obviously include all the, all the supplies and details, you know, all the specs for all the equipment that we're using um, within that blog post. Um, but so we have a more commercial duty air pump here. And as you can see, and I'll show you a close up, it has six outlets so we can run tubing and this is just like silicone aquarium kind of tubing um, to it to multiple different bubblers so with this pump we could actually aerate six um, you know buckets at a time but we're just gonna do three today and these I should say too were big enough to do a lot larger I've seen some um, like cannabis growers that have big old totes of you know that hold 20 or 30 gallons of water and then they use a pump like this and put a couple bubblers in there and really get it going um, we're doing a little smaller scale than that so we have our, our air pump and then the tubing that connects to it. And then there's a few different options for like the air stone or the bubbler. So we do have an old air stone here and we're gonna use it because we only have two of these bubblers. Um, and so for our third, third bucket, we're gonna use one of these guys. So this is like an aquarium air stone. Um, they do okay, but they don't put off as much air. Even with this high pump, um, not a ton of bubbles come out of it. And you'll be able to see when we actually get this all set up and we turn it on for you to see, it's just not, it's not quite the same. So this is what we actually use for years. It still introduces air, but if you really want to get it rolling, you might want to, you know, get something a little bit stronger, um, but absolutely still works. Um, so what we do have is these are compost um, bubbler snakes. And so on the PVC pipes around here that fit, they're made to fit right down in the bucket, um, is full of perforated air holes. And so this hooks up right here to our air pump and these will, bubble the heck out of those out of those buckets. So I'll show you that in a moment. So we have two of those, they hook to this, we just left it kind of hooked up here um, at the junction. And so those are our bubble or our bubblers and our air pump, we have our tea bags. And then the last thing is a little bit of food for the microbes. So the air feeds them, but then to really get the microbial activity kicked up an extra notch, you can introduce a little bit of molasses, a little bit of extra sugar for them. Um, so we use about a third a cup, so I have my measuring cup here, of organic molasses per bucket. And so we'll add that in when we add the tea bags in, and that's just going to, again, increase the number and the activity of happy microbes in our worm casting tea. So we'll go ahead and get that all set up so you can see exactly how we make this stuff. Okay, so here are our finished worm castings. You can see they're nice and fluffy and screened and ready to go. They're the perfect consistency. Worm castings, you want to be the consistency of a wrung out sponge. So they kind of stick together, but they're not, you know, super, super wet. And um, you want to use a minimum of two cups per five gallon bucket. Um, I'm not gonna measure though, because I don't care all that much, but I'm just gonna go ahead and fill up a few nice scoops per tea bag. Definitely more than, I'm using more than two cups here, but that's okay. So I'm going to make a nice little sack, do a little bit more there. Okay, so I'm going to do about that much. That's definitely, I'd say it was almost six cups, but we're just um, going big here because we actually just harvested a ton of extra castings um, from an old worm bin that we just changed out. So here's the bag, and then what I'm going to do is take a little piece of twine and I'm just going to tie this off at the top to make a little tea sack and then this twine is what we are going to be able to kind of hang and suspend this um, from in the bet in the um, bucket once we stick it in there so I'm just going to tie that off I've got a nice little sack now and I'm going to go ahead and just repeat the process with the next two so we have all of our buckets situated here. Obviously, we don't fill them completely full because we need a little bit of room for things to bubble. And um, it could foam up a little bit. Um, that's kind of normal, too. So we just leave, you know, a couple inches of space on the top. But we have our tea bags here. So I'm going to go ahead and dunk each tea bag into each one. And you'll see it start to infuse its nice brown compost in there. Okay, that's probably pretty good. And then what's great about these little snake bubblers is once I stick this in here, it sits right down in, um, but also it has a ring right here. So that is where I tie this guy to the ring and that serves two purposes. It keeps the tea bag kind of floating in there for us, um, but it also helps keep the, um, the snake, the tea bubbler down in the bucket because when the air is going, you know, really strong, it can actually try to like lift up and raise up. So that one's all ready and we're just gonna do the same for each of these guys here. Okay. 
This is one of the most satisfying parts, I think, is watching it turn brown. And so, get that in around that. Situate it in there and tie it up. Okay, good to go. And then on to the last one. And this is our first tea bag we had ever made, but still does the trick. And in this one, I'm going to add that older little air stone that we have. And so it doesn't have anything to tie it to. That's kind of one of the bummers about those air stones too, is that they sink to the bottom. And if there's sediment that comes out of your tea bag, it can kind of get gunked up. So when we do use this kind, um, then I will kind of come back every, every little bit um, while this is bubbling. So this is going to bubble for anywhere from 12 to 36 hours, 24 to 48 hours. Different sites have different recommendations. We usually do about 36 hours. We'll start it one morning and then feed the garden with it the following afternoon, evening. Um, but anyway, so when you put this guy in here, um, every few hours or whenever I think about it, I'll come back and I'll kind of lift it up and just let it, you know, get some new air because it kind of sits down at the bottom and gets kind of gunked up. But we'll get that guy in there. And then this one, I am just going to tie to the edge of the bucket handle here to keep it up out of the way. If I can do this. Okay, so that'll keep that there. And then we'll grab our organic molasses and just put a third cup per bucket. Nice, rich, thick molasses. All right, and I'm just going to repeat that for each three of these. So I wanted to point out a couple things really quick before we get this thing turned on is that we didn't use all those worm castings. We're going to go ahead and add that to something else. So I just wanted to tell you that. And then also to show you one thing on the pump I might not have mentioned to see this one that with the multi outlets, you can either turn them on or off. So we have the three we're not plugged into or in the off position here. And then we have the ones are on. So got everything situated and set up. Let's go ahead and get them fired up. And there they go. So you can see the big difference though between these guys and the little air or the little um, air stone. But it's still bubbling. Like I said, this is what we used for years too. Um, but these guys is just getting a lot more air in there. So that's pretty much that. We're going to let these bubble, like I said, for about 36 hours is what we're going to do. You can do anywhere from 12 to 48. And then I will go ahead and show you um, how we feed our garden with this stuff afterwards. Um, ideally, if this is like winter time or something, um, the microbes are going to be most happy if they're not freezing. So you could put the... Um, the buckets while they're bubbling in like a garage or a shed or something that keeps them a little bit more warm. Um, we're just going to leave ours outside tucked up against a warm south facing wall for now and let them bubble away and do their thing and we'll check back in about a day and a half to get the garden fed. Okay, it's been almost 36 hours. We're gonna go ahead and get this um, out of the buckets and go water the garden with it soon. I just wanted to kind of show you while it was still bubbling away, because we'll probably unhook it here in a couple minutes, that it's kind of interesting, the, um, the air pump that, you know, doesn't put off as much air, the little air stone here, uh, made for a foamier, um, compost tea than the others and there's a lot of different thoughts on foam and whatnot I don't think it's a big deal um, they say it's pretty inevitable um, it's just a byproduct of like you know bacterial action and amino acids and carbohydrates and things that are happening in there um, but just an interesting ob observation that these ones are far less foamy than that one but it doesn't mean it's inferior but it did get a lot less air so I've been trying to come and kind of move it and make sure that things not all gunked up down there so we're going to go ahead and get those unplugged and one important note is to use it right away. So I will show you what we're going to do when we get it all unplugged and I'm ready to water the garden with. Okay, 
so now fast forward almost 36 hours later this stuff's been bubbling since yesterday morning it is now the next afternoon and so we just took off the um, the air pump and removed the bubbler and so one of the things that's really important when you're making aerated compost tea like this is to use it as quickly as possible right after you remove that air source it's gonna go anaerobic really quickly so we're going to get ready to prepare it to use to be watered in our garden right away um, I would say within maybe about an hour maximum is when you would want to um, try to use it within. And so there's a couple different things. I know one of the questions most people have is what do you do with the worm castings, the castings that are actually in the tea bag still? So two different things, you have two options here. One, um, it depends on how you're going to be using it. So if you were just going to um, dump it straight into a garden bed or around the base of a tree, what we do a lot is we're just going to be using um, this like, you know, glass measuring cup and just scooping it onto the base of, you know, individual plants. So like tomatoes, squash, things like that, that um, you can really just saturate one little root zone. Then we will actually cut open, or not cut our bag, but you know, open up the bag and dump the um, spent worm castings back into the now made compost tea. Just stir it around, and then when we water, it's just going to kind of go with it. So we're just going to be adding those spent castings as well as the tea into the bed for those kind of applications, and that would also work for fruit trees as well. Um, and then if you're going to do um, either like a foliar spray, so if you're going to be adding this compost tea, which can be used as a foliar spray for plants, and they'll actually uptake it through their leaves and things. Um, or if you want to more evenly spread it throughout a bed for something like radishes. So we have radishes here, something like carrots, um, something like that, you would, might want to put it into a water can. So we have a watering can here, and obviously the holes are going to get all clogged up, um, and same within a sprayer. So for that instance, you want to take the bag and squeeze the heck out of it, you know, try to really extract as much of the worm casting juice that's kind of stuck in that tea bag into your bucket to leave it behind, um, but then actually just take those worm castings out of that that tea bag and dispose of them somewhere else in your garden by dispose of I mean fertilize something with it so you can put that around the base of a tree or right into your raised bed as well you just don't want it to go into your container so you don't get it clogged up so those are kind of the two different things that we do so I was just going to show you really quick the example of each um, so this one I'm just going to go ahead and cut it usually I try to untie and save our twine but for the purpose of um, expediting it for the video, I'm going to try to get this cut off of here and then just dump this right back into our thing. Of course, these are awful scissors. <laughs> yeah. Okay, those scissors were terrible. So we grabbed some other scissors so that I could get that apart. Um, but so I'm just going to go ahead and I'll get this tea snake out of the way first and it'll kind of dribble and whatnot so i want to try to get that to stay into the bucket as much as possible and then we'll rinse this out too so it doesn't get clogged with anything and so again with this bucket we're going to add this um, with measuring cups straight into the bed so i'm just going to put these worm castings right into the bucket and then as we're watering we'll um, kind of stir it we'll just bring like a little stir stick with us so that we make sure we're getting it more evenly into the beds um, because a lot of it will sink so we kind of stir it up as we're going around the garden with it so that's pretty much empty and that's all in there now so that is one way and then for this one I want to put this one in that um, in the um, can there so I don't want to have these come and clog it so for this one get rid of this snake and I'm gonna squeeze it and it's pretty ooey gooey um, but I want to get all of this goodness left back in the bucket so I'll just squeeze this around for a bit and then I'm gonna repeat I think that one I'll probably just dump into it as well because most of what we're gonna do is just scoop it straight out of the bucket into our raised beds or around our trees um, I think we'll just fill a couple cans for some of the beds that need it um, more evenly distributed so as you can see, I'm getting nice and disgusting too. So <laughs> if you uh, are squeamish, you might not like this part. It's pretty gooey. But then we'll open this up and we're gonna put these castings um, around one of our spoiled fruit trees. Okay, and it can be a little bit tricky getting this into here. So all we have is a funnel here and then Aaron's gonna help me because I would probably spill it since it's pretty heavy. And we just dump the one that we want into the watering can in here and obviously all that's not going to fit all at once so we'll just do most of it or you know quarter of it all right that should be good for now thank you sir appreciate it and then now i have it in my can and i can evenly distribute 
I don't know if you can see from there, but it's pretty brown and nice and rich. So these are some spoiled little radish seedlings. And I'm going to do the same thing for carrots. Um, and I can't think if we have anything else like this um, that needs the watering can treatment. But it's good also if you have a lot of like small greens, so like lettuces or something, where you just want to saturate the whole bed um, instead of giving them each little individual cups. Okay, so we're back here in the back coop garden area, and I went ahead and I used the watering can to water some of the carrots, and now Aaron's just going through, and, uh-oh, the chickens got, they got your, you got their attention. He touched the greens. Um, but anyways, Aaron is just giving each plant back here anywhere from, I don't know, half a cup to a cup, so it just depends, so he'll fill up one little um, cup and then usually spread it between a couple of the plants. So how much you give just depends on how much you have and how much you have to water you know if you make a batch and you have a smaller garden than us then you know spoil your plants you really can't overdo it with um, worm compost tea it's super mild and it can't you know burn your plants like other fertilizers so he's just giving um, you know a fair helping to each little one but we have a lot of plants to do in the front um, the patio garden as well as this area so everybody's probably getting about a half a cup I'm thinking um, if we were doing a tree though we would definitely give them closer to like a full that's like a two two cup measuring cup so that is is watering with compost tea. The last little thing I wanted to mention is it is helpful if you do this, um, chick chicks, if you do this um, right after you have watered already, um, just because then your soil is more um, ready to accept more moisture. You know, if you try to water really dry soil sometimes, how it just kind of sits on top. So if you have watered your soil, it's going to suck it up a little bit easier and then you're probably not going to need to water again for a couple days um, and it gives the compost tea a nice amount of time to sit there and you know do its thing before you kind of water it down with additional water so that is our compost tea lesson hope you enjoyed it and um, stay tuned for more on homestead and chill <laughs>